The Pan American Center in Las Cruces between El Paso and Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tapia remains a huge ticket seller, a crowd pleaser with a magnificent record at world level. He's held four different world title belts and he's not finished yet. The opponent, Torres then, a former Argentine champion at super flyweight, but he couldn't handle the likes of Morales and Barrera in previous big fights. Tapia starts favorite here. After the first bell, Glenn McCrory and Adam Smith. Think you've had a crazy life? Johnny Tapia is the wildest, most emotionally charged and complicated character in boxing today. After a turbulent roller coaster ride both outside and inside the ring during the 90s, Tapia sits now in his third reign as world champion. But how much more has the real Mevida Loco got left this side of the millennium? Here in his home state of New Mexico, Tapia defends his WBO bantamweight title for the first time against Argentinian Pedro Javier Torres. A former South American champion, can Torres here in the red and white lift himself up to match the always adrenaline pumped and fiery Tapia? And should Tapia box as he has become more accustomed to do of late or go to war against a man who has been stopped early before? Well, I think Tap Tapia will want to try and get rid of this opponent as early as he can. He wants to try and impress. He's looking for big money fights against the, the big names out there. And uh, yeah, I think he'll want to do a, a good job on this opponent. Tapia will be looking for speed. An excellent counter puncher try to pressure Torres back he's already on the back foot Torres just circling around the ring can be quite negative sometimes but the word is that he wants to slow Tapia down he's got to really hasn't he well he's got to we're not fighting the way he is in the, the opening session and Tapia just trying to rough him up a little bit just make his presence felt maintain John He's got my arm, says Tapia. Already a little bit of roughness in the first round, and Johnny Tapia won't mind that. There's evidence of his quick hand speed. Watch the left hook to the body. That's Tapia's honey punch. Torres now starting to get his jab working a little bit. He's got to do something to keep Tapia off him. Because Tapia just walking forward, looking for the punches and, you know, very negative Torres. He does hold the WBO's Latino bantamweight belt. This Javier Torres. Got to see if a 12-round decision over Dario Asuaga last October. But he is coming off a loss. Nice combination from Tapio there. He throws out well the, the left, right, and the left hook to the body there. His favorite combination. Not the fastest start from Tapio, but surely he's done enough in this first round. As they go back to the corners. There's trainer Adrian Davis, new man aboard the Tapia team. Second round of the WBO bantamweight title, the eight stone six belt, Johnny Tapia. Here in the black and gold trunks, 33 years of age, a four time world champion, up against Pedro Javier Torres from Salta on the lower slopes of the Andes in northwest Argentina. Well, Torres has now come out a, a lot more aggressively, and this this is better for Torres. He's starting to throw the, the overhand right, and he's caught Tapia a couple of times with that punch. Tapia is going to have to just be a little careful defensively. He can be open to the right hand. Tapia, his only defeat on the record was a loss to Paulie Ayala, and Ayala caught him with a southpaw stance with a right a fair bit. That might be Torres's plan. He's getting closer anyway. Well, he's starting to get through a little bit. Tapia has got the, the good boxing brain to, to get his hands up when the punches come in. Stop. But Torres, you know, this Stop. is better from him. Watch the elbows. Watch the elbows, says yeah. referee yeah. Rocky yeah. Burke. Yeah. And the heads as well. 
Not a big puncture, Torres. Only eight stoppages Sweet, in his play. 32 Break. wins. Break. No, John. No. Well, it's getting a little bit rough in there. Both guilty of infringements. Torres using the head and Tapia coming back with a little Break. punch after the break. And then the elbow that. going in there. Elbow is high there answer. from Tapia. He looks so much more the bigger man in there. Both weighed in under the 118 or the 8 stone 6 limit. But Johnny Tapia has come into this fight at over 9 stone. He really is tight. He walks around at welterweight. He's lost 31 pounds in six weeks. That can't be healthy, Glenn. It's not. I mean, he's playing a very dangerous game, as fighters do when they go up and down in in weights like that. Sometimes they can do it, and it goes for a certain amount of time, and then all of a sudden the body says no, and you, know, you just have nothing left. But he's using those physical advantages well so far, Tapia. Well, that's the difference here, the, the physical strength, a little bit extra know-how from Tapia. You know, he's managed to block the heavy shots from Torres, and then he's coming back stronger towards the end of the round to catch the judge's eye. Does not like defeat Johnny Tapia. Such a proud man when he lost to Paulie Ayala. He had a nightmare the next night, and he woke up, and he said to his wife, did I really lose? And she said, yes, you lost, now get on with your life. And that is what he's saying he's doing now. Manueva Locker, my new life. He's 33. Let's see how much he's got left. Johnny, get back to your jabbing, man. Get back to your jabbing. I know you, but check your Get back to your jab, they're saying. Well, he's just been a little bit too aggressive, looking to get close to Torres and rough him up a bit, as he was doing there. Pedro Javier Torres on the left of your screens in the red and white. Just backpedaling again like he did in the opening round against champion Johnny Tapia in his 51st fight. Here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. About 140 miles from his hometown of Albuquerque where Johnny Tapia is a hero. He has quite simply been through it all. His mother was kidnapped, raped, hanged and stabbed with an ice pick when he was eight years old. His father, he says, was shot when he was in his mother's stomach. It has been a crazy life for Tapia, but he's come back through all of it and reigns again as a world champion. And he looks a class above this, Torres. He does, he's very nonchalant in, in this defence. And, you know, a little bit cocky. But doing some good moves, there's a nice little step to the side and then catching Torres. And I don't really think Torres deserves this shot. His form is not that great. And, you know, I think Tapio recognises that and is playing with him a little. Yes, Torres has been knocked out in two rounds by Eric right. Morales, the brilliant WBC super bantamweight champion and in four by Marco Antonio Barrera who most people thought beat Break. Morales in that cracking fight they had recently Break. Tapia not the biggest puncher but he's sharp A lot better when he starts to use the jab. Tabia has got good boxing skills, very educated when he does that, but he does like to rough it up. He does like to get in close. He just can't resist it. In for the left hooks, the Argentinian. And Tapia just nods to him as he goes back to work. To the left side again, Johnny Tapia. Well, he's just starting to get to Torres a bit, starting to put his punches together, doubling up with a good double left hook to the body and head. He's completely controlling the ring here, although Torres tries to come back with a counter, but he's done very little effective work so far, the challenger. really getting behind their 
local hero. About 12,000 here in the Pan American Center. Just closing down the range, and that's a uh, good punches again from Chappie on a good round. First defense of the WBO bantamweight title. Johnny Tapia champion against Pedro Javier Torres. It's a strong division, the uh, eight stone six worldwide at the moment. Tim Austin holds the IBF. Veripal in promotion from Thailand, the WBC, and uh, Pauli Ayala, the only man to have beaten Tapia, the WBA. Tapia well in front, we think against Pedro Javier Torres, who's been a little negative so far, but the word from his camp is that he's stubborn and strong, and will be just hoping that Tapia can outpunch himself a little bit and tire towards the closing stages he is the younger by five years Torres well Torres has got to start using his jab more stop bringing that right hand in you know, take the fight to Tapio a little bit if he is you know if Tapio is beginning to struggle with the weight if the age is starting to get to him you know that's the only chance Torres has got if he can make Tapio fight at a high level just switching between Southpaw and Orthodox Tapia as he's accustomed to do so. That's how Pauli Ayala beat Johnny Tapia. He drew him in and Tapia could not use his strength against Ayala's skills. Can be frustrated as well, Tapia. He can be. You know, he hasn't got good upper body movement. You know, he doesn't move his head well. You know, so he can be a little bit defensively open, but Torres has to throw the big overhand right and left hooks to try and you know, get that shot, them shots on. He can be so brilliant, Tapia. Probably his career topped in July 97 when he won a 12-round points decision over big Albuquerque rival Danny Romero. In Las Vegas, he picked up the IBF super flyweight title that night as well. Tapia showed his boxing skills and negated Romero's power. Well, Torres is pulling away with that jab. He's trying to, to work, but Tapia landing with all the eye-catching punches. And Torres was the Argentine super flyweight champion and the South American holder of that belt from 94 to 96 he's uh, got some pedigree as an amateur too Break! Break! But Tapia is far the stronger so far here and his speed again too much for Torres Stop. well the crowd enjoyed that with Tapia really opening up Good work from him at the end of the round. There, yeah, just showing a bit of defensive movement there. Up rushes Johnny Tapia for this seventh round in front of his faithful fans. He works with the local police on uh, these fights in New Mexico, Johnny Tapia. Anyone who hands in guns to designated police stations gets free tickets for the fight. And 3,000 loads of ammunition and 400 guns were handed in in the last two days before this. And Tapia very proud because of his rough and difficult past. Sounds like a quiet little town, Adam. He's had all sorts of problems, Tapia. Was out for three years through drugs. He says he's never completely reformed, but he's done his best as he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe now with Javier Torres. Well, this is good from Torres. He's showing you know, a big heart here, taking the fight to Tapia. This is certainly better from Torres now. He was just easing off on the back foot in the early rounds and Tapia was in a rhythm counter-punching effectively 
and not letting Torres into the fight. Got to pressure him. He's got it. That was good work from Torres. Just you know, throwing lots of punches, wide hooks. That's uh, the sort of thing you can catch Tapio with. And uh, yeah, he worked well there. But Tapio, you know, he'll relish that. He's a he's a real macho man. He likes anybody that can stand and have a fight with him. Right. Right. Many think there are no braver boxers around on the circuit today than this man, Johnny Tapio. There's uh, three tattoos on his back. And one is of a sacred heart, the other is the Virgin Mary, and one is of his late mum and wife, Teresa, who is his manager as well. He says the only person in the world he trusts. Trying to get that jab out again, Torres. In a more positive round from the Argentinian. Right. Tabio, a little rough, and I think his own fans not really like that, using the, the shoulder to push Torres off. Right. Right. Again, Tapia looks disgusted as Torres tries to hold. But he has been more effective. He has been. He just. Yeah, didn't defend as well, Tapia again. He's complaining of a low blow there, Torres. Just getting a bit rough at this stage in the fight. Yeah, he's going down, he's been given five minutes by the referee, Rocky Burke. But he okay. doesn't look as though he'll need anything like that. Time! Time in! And Tapia bows and puts his hand out. He always shows respect, Johnny Tapia, and that's why he's so popular. Always shows respect, but normally does it all over again. But then after the bell, a bit of late punching there. Exactly as I thought. <laughs> Real Jekyll and Hyde character, this Johnny Tapia. Well, there's the, the low blow, and it really was quite low. He is rough, Tapia. He will shake your hand, but you know, he'll put the punches in, and they're just throwing after the bell. Five rounds to go here in Las Cruces. The red trunks of Pedro Javier Torres, the challenger from Salta in Argentina, 28 years of age. He's won 32 of his 55 contests. And he's up against the champion, Johnny Tapia, at 33. How much more oh. of this story are we going to see from Evita Loca? You could not script this and sometime a movie will be made about this man and his life. He's got ambitions though, further than the bantamweight division, he wants to go up, struggling at the weight, he wants to meet Marco Antonio Barrera, or Eric Morales, and watch your, kidneys. watch your kidneys now, the referee says, again Tapia bows. Well, what a terrific fight any of those would be, Tapia with Barrera or Morales. You know, they will be exciting, but you know, could he carry the, the weight off? Could he be strong at those at that weight? He probably will be. He's never been a concussive puncher, but of course against Barrera and Morales, they really are world world class. The Barrera fight could happen because of the link with promoter Frank Warren, who's taken over Tapia's career. Tapia again going southpaw. Well, I think this is the kind of opponent that, you know, Tabio can try a few things with. He is, you know, just switching occasionally to southpaw and with some good effect. Tapia tries to work the body of Torres. He's going to have to pull something out now, this Argentinian, if he wants to join the ranks of Carlos Monzon and Julio Cesar Vasquez, Miguel Castellini as Argentinian world champions. Never seemed to have the strength behind that jab. He has, he just poured with it really, and then Tapia puts his out really solid. And you know, that's the sort of punch that will, will count in a, a fight like this. Right! Right! The referee has been busy from the opening bell. Again, Torres holds on to Tapia's back. 
Maybe he's not starting to like these body shots that Tappy is throwing. No, I think Tabby is really hurting him around the, the body from very early on. He's boxed out of a, a crouch, and I think that's, you know, in case he gets, you know, he's trying to defend himself against the, the big body punches that Tabby throws. Yes, he has got a height advantage, Torres. But it doesn't look like it in there. Double left from Tapia. Good action here in the eighth. Sorry, and this is what Tavia relishes. He relishes when an opponent takes the fights to him. The crowd gets going, and he reacts. Again at the bell, they become tangled up in one another. Well, Torres tries to take the fight to Tavia, but look, he grits his teeth, starts to let the punches go, really does relish a brawl. Ninth round here in New Mexico. Champion Johnny Tapia in the black and gold trunks. Former WBA bantamweight champion, WBO and IBF super flyweight king. Now reigning as WBO bantamweight champion, and he says this will be his last fight at eight stone six. This is Pedro Javier Torres' his first world title shot. He's starting to struggle a little with the weight of Tapia's punches. Tapia really leaning in, looking to, to get the leverage into those body punches and catching Torres with both hands. Torres going to be very sore around the ribs tomorrow. And to be fair to Torres, he has come in and given it a go as best he knows how. But on paper, it was always going to be a hard task. Ranked number nine by the World Council. And Tapia looking to put on a show in front of his home fans. Another left digs into the body of Torres. And he goes down to take his first count of the contest. Success for Johnny Tapia here in the ninth. And it was the sheer weight of his shots that has Torres in a little bit of trouble here, he doesn't look badly hurt, but he's obviously tired. Well, he's been hit with so many hooks to the body, that first left hook really was a good one. I don't think he ever re quite recovered from that, now Tapia putting on the pressure. Looking for that left hook again, Tapia, as Torres crouches down and tries to hold on. Gets low to try and protect his body. Can Tapia find it? As we said earlier, Barrera and Morales stopped this man. If Tapia could do it, he would send out a message to the higher weight class that he has plenty left to offer. Well, he really is going for the, the stoppage now. Some good punches going in. This has got to be taking its toll on Torres. Tries to jam his way out, Torres, but there's no power behind it. And he needs to hold on to get through this round. Just shoved off. Okay, maintain him. Okay, control yourself. Okay, no, no let it pain him. Okay. Well, that was a big shove there from Tabby, but he's frustrated. He's saying that Torres is holding. He wants to get on with the action. And Torres is just trying to get through this round. He's using all the tricks he knows. and lifts his hands up as if to say he made it but it was a terrible night for Torres well there's no really reason to celebrate just getting through the round but celebrating he was he was caught with some good punches and just managed to get through it so nine minutes to go Johnny Tapia steams in to Pedro Javier Torres the challenger under a terrific onslaught, and how Tapia is really going for this now. Will Torres be able to stand the heat, the sheer pace, and the ferocity with which Tapia throws his punches? And if Glenn Shawley, he'd been a bigger puncher, Tapia, Torres would not be in the fight anymore. Well, it doesn't look like he's going to be there for that long with the sort of attack that Tapia is putting on him. You wouldn't think he can take much more of this.
Tapia really wanting to put a show on for his fans. What's interesting is that Torres is a natural bantamweight and Tapia has looked quicker. He's looked quick, quicker, you know, he's very sharp, he's more accurate, stronger. This is his first fight under new trainer Adrian Davis was with Freddie Roach. Tapia and he's been working on movement with Davis. It's worked, but he's getting frustrated that he can't get rid of him now. Yes, he is, Torres again hauling and Tapia getting annoyed. He wants to get in, he wants to try and finish the job here. It's a very negative Torres. And shaking his head now, Torres. Is that because of the body shots? Well, Tapia really is in complete control and it's just a, a matter of survival. Anything he can do, Torres, to get through this. Tapia looks out of the ring there in disbelief that he cannot find the clean shots to get rid of this man. Torres seems so negative but then comes back with little pitter-patter punches of his own to keep this even vaguely competitive as Tapia looks for the big blow that might end it. Well, I think at this stage a lot of referees might have stopped it here. This is good pressure from Tapia. Right. Stalking Torres around the ring now. No place to hide for the man from Salter. And he's complaining more and more. Right. Javier Torres. He just hasn't been able to get into this world title fight at all. And a shame. I mean, this is his big opportunity. Well, I think it's very difficult when he's in with a fighter of Tapia's class. He's tried gamely. Again, getting rough, getting frustrated, Tapia. A few boos from around the arena here at some of the tactics going on. So, six minutes to go here in the WBO bantamweight title. And one point is being taken away from Pedro Javier Torres for consistent fouling, holding. Yeah, that's Could have been for, for anything. That's for hauling. He's just grabbing on to Tapia far too much. And now the crowd's had enough. They're getting frustrated. Tapia has been frustrated for a long time. Finally, the ref takes a point off uh, persistent hauling. As you were saying in the last round, the referee could easily have called it off by now because Torres really doesn't look as though he wants to win anymore. Well, you know, he's game, he's still throwing punches, but he's very, very much on the defensive. You know, he's looking to survive in there. You know, he's still a proud man. You know, he'll not want to go down easy. The judges from Florida, Chicago, and here in Las Cruz will decide should this go to the scorecards and Johnny Tapia we think is a long way in front Torres probably needs to stop him and with only eight knockouts on his record he really has to go for Tapia now but he's still on the back foot Tapia relentless well I really am amazed that Torres is still there I think it is down to the punch power of Tapia, he, you know, he, he just doesn't carry a big enough dig to get him out of there to give the referee an excuse to get him out of there. Right. Watch Elbow elbows. again, goes in high, and the referee just has a little word with Tapia, as he has been doing for most of the night with the two of them. And he did box well when he won this title against Jorge Julio back in January in the pit in Albuquerque. Tapia. Julio was a more accomplished performer than Torres and maybe Tapia found it easy or easier to fight in the higher class. Yes, I think Tapia maybe just been a, a little too relaxed with this fight. Just hasn't had the, the, the opponent to really bring the best out in him but still a, a good performance from Tapia. Right. Yes, he has showed that he has plenty left despite 
making his professional debut back in 1988 in those three years of inactivity for drugs. The long road and the show looks set to go on here for Johnny Tapia. He cannot be easy to fight. <laughs> well, he's just all over Torres. But Torres still gamely trying to punch back and throw some jabs and a mark of respect to each other there. Yes, that was nice. That Jekyll and Hyde of Johnny Tapia coming out again. As rough as they come, they're the fans. Mi vida loco. The hero has surely just got three minutes to get through to retain this title. And he's quickly off his stool. Torres is slow. Final chapter of this one. Can Pedro Javier Torres mount one assault? He hasn't managed it in 11 rounds so far. The Argentinian challenger has been brave. If controversial in there, but then many opponents or many of Tapia's fights are often rough and tough. And Tapia complains there. Something maybe in his eye. Uh, a headbutt, was it? Yes, I think he's complaining of the, of the head. Torres is... You know, he's a bit loose with the head. He's just trying to survive, and I think in trying to survive, he caught Tapia in the in the eye with his head. It's a little cut by the right eye now of Johnny Tapia. He's angry about that, and that may well have come from the low crouch-like style of Torres, which he's been adapting all night. And now he tries to put his head in, Johnny Tapia. And that was a blatant butt there from absolute. Tapia. He really went for that. And he's, he's almost trying to fight with his head a little bit. And again from Johnny Tapia. And now Torres goes down. And that looked like sheer frustration for Johnny Tapia because everything is going his way. I think Torres may be making a meal of it. What do you reckon? Well, Torres is making a meal of it. But that was silly from Tapia. Blatantly went out there to get revenge. You know, he's got a, a little nick, I think, off the head of Torres. And he just wanted to get him back. And you know, he's not the guy to use the head against Tapia. Tapia says, take a point from Torres. Instead, he's having a point deducted himself, and he bows to his crowd, but he knows that was naughty. Johnny Tapia, he didn't need to do that. And he's going for the, the brutal finish, and he's got Torres rocked. The little left hook to the body was the start, and Torres takes another count down for the second time in the contest. That was Johnny Tapia's frustration and anger coming out. Torres lifts his arm, but he's got a minute and 20 to survive. And this is, Tor this is Tapia showing what he can do now. This is more like him. Really going to, to get Torres out of there. Yes, he has been in total control, Johnny Tapia. And he's now just turning on the flashy skills and the speed to the echoes of his beloved faithful here in New Mexico. I think he's, he's making a statement that although he did that but he is by far the superior boxer here on the night and he's a very, very good world champion still. The bell goes to end what has been a pretty one-sided contest for the world bantamweight title and Johnny Tapia has had difficulty getting used to the negative style of Javier Torres, but has surely done enough. Well, he's a landslide winner, you've got to say. He won everything. Torres put up some resistance because of, you know, he wanted to survive, but that was a, a solid performance. There's the head going in. That was just blatant, ridiculous, but you know, that's the sort of guy Tapia is. And there's the revenge. Right when the referee was there, Straight he, he knew it, didn't him. he? Just does it again. Just make sure he gets it on and lets Torres know what he did wrong. That's the pressure from Tapia there, just putting it through, and that was a good victory. Let's see how the judges have got it with Jimmy Lennon.
Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Lorenzo Saez scores about 118 to 107. Judges Ted Gimza and Richard Green both scored about 119 to 107. All three in favor of the winner. And still the WBO title fight, of the world. a success. Still Johnny the world champion, Johnny Tapia, will be...